came upon them. Other tribes came warring against them and drove them into the depths of the forest. The forest was dark and swampy, for it was very ancient, and the boughs of the trees were so closely interwoven that they shut out the view of the sky, and the sun's rays did all they could to pierce the thick foliage and reach the waters of the swamp. And wherever they reached those waters, poisonous vapors arose, and the people began to get sick and die. They had to get out of the forest, but there were only two ways. One was to go back over the road they'd come, but at the end of it, strong and vicious foes awaited them. The other was to push forward through the forest, but there they'd encounter the giant trees, whose mighty branches were closely entwined, and whose gnarled roots were sunk deep into the mire of the bogs. They were a brave people, and they would have fought to the death with those who had once defeated them, had they not feared being wiped out in the fight. They had their forefathers' behests to defend, and if they perished, their behests would perish with them. So they sat, pondering their fate through the long nights, with the poisonous vapors rising around them, and the forest singing its mournful song and the shadows of the fires leaped about them in a soundless dance, and it seemed as if it weren't mere shadows dancing, but the evil spirits of forest and bog celebrating their triumph.
Alexander Nesterov, a junior research assistant at the Pole 21 Polar Station, is due at coordinates 86 degrees 21 north, 74 degrees 57 east, on the 27th of March 1981, where he will board the nuclear icebreaker North Wind. Where is it going? The cans are in place. No sign yet. Sit down. Warm up while it burns. I brought two more crates to dry. Sit down. Warm up while it burns.
Through the door and up the stairs, quickly! It won't hold much longer! Captain, the rod shows formation of sea ice all along our course. The rod, as in the divining rod? Another clairvoyant gadget of yours. Sir, clairvoyance is for shamans. This is cutting-edge scientific equipment, virtually foolproof. Do you know why it is called the rod? Well, yeah, you had it, sir. Named after a divining rod, a stick used to search for water underground was real popular back in the days of wooden ships and navigating under the stars. Times change, but some things remain much the same. The ship must respect you. You must listen to her, understand her, talk to her, live with her one-on-one -on -one for many years. Then you become more than just a captain. You become a part of something bigger. That's great, but isn't it just pretty words? Sir, it seems to me all you've got to do is hold on to the wheel. When are you going to let me drive, by the way? You don't waste any time, do you? Well, if you're keen, try this for now. 